recording now and uh, this is uh, my uh, uh, DIY audio kit of the uh, Nelson Pass designed uh, Korg New Tube B1 preamplifier and uh, the preamp is actually this bit on the top. The bottom here is a power supply I made for it. Uh, I, I built this as a kit from uh, DIY Audio. I was lucky to have one of the last of the uh, preliminary kits. Anyway, uh, originally it came with this, which is a uh, switching power supply wall wart. And I grew dissatisfied with the sound of that, which is why you see the uh, large linear power supply there. I'll try and include some uh, pictures of the uh, inside of the supply. But anyway, uh, this is a design. Uh, uh, Korg, as you probably know, is a keyboard and musical instrument company in Japan. And... Uh, they actually uh, had another company come up with this design called the New Tube. And it's basically a uh, cold cathode device based on those uh, blue uh, electrofluorescent displays you used to see on the front of uh, your VCR or whatever back in the day. Uh, and. Uh, he said, hey, uh, how hard would it be to make uh, a dual triode device out of this? And so they did. The resulting device is about the size of an old uh, uh, microprocessor chip from the uh, 80s or so. It's about two inches long, an inch uh, wide. has about uh, 12 pins on it. And a glass window on top. Uh, and so you can actually watch the uh, triodes glow blue. Uh, when we pull the cover off this, you won't be able to see that, though, uh, because the, uh, I've put a piece of uh, sound dampening material on it, uh, which we'll, uh, we'll talk about at length later. Anyway, the kit was... Uh, quite complete. Uh, about all I added, I think, was wire to build it, and it took, oh, about three hours at a leisurely pace one evening, and I was able, uh, after, I was easily able to dial in the bias on the new tube and uh, give it a listen, and I was pretty impressed with it at first. Uh, was quite detailed, but it had that uh, gentle 12AX7 semi-rolled-off treble that you're used to hearing in a tube product. Anyway, uh, as I mentioned, this was designed by Nelson Pass, and he's uh, famous from uh, Threshold Audio and uh, Pass Audio as a designer of cost-no-object high-end audio gear. But the man is also uh, a hobbyist and loves uh, the recreation, the accurate recreation of sound. And uh, he uh, is a, uh, also a legend in the DIY builders community because he, uh, he comes up with designs for people to build that are uh, basically simplified versions of his uh, commercial designs. And uh, one of the things he came up with was uh, this. Now, the B1 is a preamp. Uh, it's a uh, unity gain preamp using uh, JFET uh, uh, buffers. So there's no voltage gain, but enough current gain to drive a cable quite easily. So, uh, and it's uh, an amazing preamp. It uh, has a... Uh, a very neutral, transparent sonic signature. And basically, uh, this design incorporates uh, two of the B1 uh, buffers in it. Uh, 
this is a uh, schematic of the unit and you can see there's a uh, triode here there's a buffer on the input buffer on the output and that's because the new tube is a uh, very low current device and uh, its input impedance isn't as high as the traditional tubes and it is virtually incapable on its own of driving uh, any distance of audio cable, hence the uh, presence of the B1 buffers there. So, see, I've lost my place. Where was I going with this? So, uh, this design was released by DIY Audio. I built one last fall. Like I said, I got the last of the uh, preliminary test batch. And, uh, built the unit has a interesting sound because it's definitely a hybrid product i mean you've got that solid state bass and punch and snap to it but uh you also have uh, a smooth tube treble on it which is uh pretty cool but uh me being a uh, diy guy or uh perpetual hobbyist I couldn't leave well enough and now alone and started uh, playing with it fairly soon uh, one of the things with the new tube uh, design pardon me as it comes from DIY audio is uh, that uh, it's using electrolytic capacitors for the input and output coupling caps all the interstage capacitors and I couldn't live with that. <laughs> it just, uh, there was a certain, how do I put it, uh, kind of uh, scratchiness or hardness to the sound, preeminent in the lower treble, upper mid range, which I didn't care for much. And I said, that's got to be due to those electrolytics in there, even though they were very nice Nichicon electrolytics. So uh, what I did, and let me show you here, is I put in some film type capacitors. So we'll pull the cover off here. Be careful I don't drop the uh, screws out. And here's the guts of the unit. So basically you can see there are now uh, six uh, uh, polypropylene film capacitors stuffed in here in an area that was never designed to hold them. But uh, yeah, <laughs> it worked. Uh, all the original values were 10 microfarad and uh, if you can see, uh, actually only the output ones are still 10. Uh, the inputs are half a microfarad. Uh, the inner stage ones just before the new tube are one microfarad. Okay, so let me set this down. Hopefully you can still see okay. But here we have the new tube. And there's a sheet of uh, sorbothane over the top of it. And we have input buffers down here, left and right. Output buffers here, left and right. The B1 uses a uh, constant current source on the MOSFET to give it a uh, quite a neutral character. So that's why you see uh, pairs of, uh, did I say MOSFETs? The JFETs. Anyway, uh, I have this open because I'm going to play with the bias once again. But... Uh, you can see here uh, you have uh, inputs. I've got them shorted for uh, the bias suggest here. Here's the uh, power cable coming in. There's a power switch on the front, input select switch over here, and the volume pot is here on this little uh, circuit board. I put some uh, Pico caps there uh, in series to get a very low value because uh, I'm trying to do an RF bypass there just uh, in case there's any uh, EMI coming in on the inputs. Again, that was a, uh, hey, let's see if this helps in terms of smoothing the sound out. 
But anyway, uh, when I did put the uh, film caps in, it did uh, greatly smooth out the sound. Uh, it made it sound a lot more like a conventional tube amplifier rather than uh, a uh, ultra bright solid state device. There was still a little bit of a rasp there, which I wasn't quite sure what was going on with it at the time. But uh, that uh, was solved when I went with the uh, linear power supply here, which uh, this has uh, is a unit I built. Uh, it's using the same style cases as the uh, new tube, only uh, this is a uh, uh, 1U Galaxy case. This is a 2U Galaxy case, so it's two units high. These are uh, both of them uh, uh, I got through, uh, well, the case came with the kit for the preamp. This bottom one I ordered through DIY Audio. Uh, they deal with a company in uh, Italy which uh, makes these beautiful cases. Uh, they're very modular. And God bless them, the shipping is quick. You get them within a week, usually. And uh, so much nicer than waiting a month or more for something to come from China. So uh, I've had the unit six months now. I consider it a uh, kind of my reference preamp. I have a uh, Mu follower uh, using uh, 6SN7 vacuum tubes, which is a wonderful preamp. Uh, it's a little softer sounding than this. doesn't have quite the detail or the punch, but uh, it's uh, definitely a bit, maybe a bit smoother in the treble. The uh, linear power supply here did wonders to uh, uh, make the treble and uh, Upper mid-range, lower treble, uh, smoother, uh, give it a little more depth and detail on top of that. So anyway, uh, it's a very uh, beautiful unit, despite what I've done to it. But uh, the uh, new tube has uh, one... I'm not going to call it a fatal flaw, but it's a um, major uh, caveat that uh, any builder needs to address. Uh, and that's that, uh, as far as I know, uh, almost all new tubes are microphonic in that they'll uh, pick up external noises. Uh, you flip the switch and you'll hear the little tube elements ringing in sympathy with that vibration. My original, uh, this is the second new tube unit I put in this unit. The first one was, uh, what's a good word, hideously, supernaturally, unbelievably microphonic. <laughs> I mean, I've had, uh, well, if anyone who's worked with the 6DJ8 tube family knows they're uh, they tend to be microphonic. You can tap on the tube and you'll hear it go bing. You know, this was amazing uh, though. The, uh, when I uh, first had the, uh, the uh, B1 preamp here set up in the system, I could sit on my listening uh, couch uh, about uh, seven, eight foot away and clap my hands and hear the new tube ring. Uh, some things made that uh, exaggerated. Uh, the, uh, you notice there's uh, no perforations in the case here. Uh, and also I have sound deadening material on it. Uh, it's a dynamat. You also see it inside the cases here. All that was done in an effort to uh, damp out vibrations before they got to the board. And it helped very little. I covered the uh, slots in the original top and bottom cases with uh, uh, masking, uh, not masking tape, but uh, uh, several layers of uh, heavy duct tape, which uh, helped a bit. But uh, the final 
thing that helped was uh, if you watch the uh, board is resiliently mounted. It's sitting on a bunch of uh, washers, if you see here, black washers with nylon hardware. And uh, it's completely isolated. Uh, at no time does metal touch the cabinet or the uh, board. It's either, uh, uh, there, so there's a, uh, here we go. You have uh, the uh, sorbothane washers there with the uh, nylon screw coming through. Then there's a stack of sorbothane washers under the board. There's about four. Then the board, then another sorbothane washer, and then finally the uh, nut for the uh, nylon hardware. And all that, uh, that did the trick for me. That isolated the board and damped out, uh, 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 reduced its uh, susceptibility to any external noises. You notice I added a d an additional ground there. Uh, a lot of folks will ground through the uh, power jack, but it's not actually, unless you put a star washer or something on it, it's not going to make good contact with the case. This actually scraped the uh, anodizing away so the case is well grounded. But anyway, this is what did the trick for me uh, in order to uh, uh, reduce the microphonics of the unit. Uh, you still hear a bit of a ring when you work the switch. Uh, it's not hooked up to anything right now, so we won't hear it. But anyway, uh, Sorbothane, this is it. Hang on a second. These are the washers. And uh, there, it's a very soft rubber, uh, or silicone type rubber. And uh, it's about as uh, soft as a gummy bear. So it's uh, very good at soaking up vibration. And uh, the new tube is sitting on a pad of two of them. It's got a pad of it on top. I have the uh, <laughs> sorbothane uh, washers mounting the board. And if you also look, uh, these fat uh, round feet you see, the hemispherical feet, are also made from sorbothane. So uh, that's uh, the lengths I've gone to to uh, keep external vibration from uh, uh, messing with the new tube. There, uh, if you uh, if you go to the uh, thread for this uh, design on the uh, DIY Audio website, you will see a lot of mention on this. Uh, some folks are lucky. They get a new tube that's not very microphonic at all. They don't need to go to any extreme lengths. I've had to go to extreme lengths. So uh, that's about it. Uh, like I said, it's a very good sounding unit. Uh, I actually prefer it to the uh, Audio Research Corporation LS1 uh, line stage that I got. Uh, that unit is uh, uh, based on uh, the 6DJ8-6920 tube and has uh, also has uh, some uh, uh, solid state devices in the uh, uh, Johnson hybrid circuit. But I've never had good luck in getting it to sound as transparent uh, is this. I actually had it uh, one time I got some uh, an expensive new old stock tube and actually had it oscillate on me so uh, it's kind of been sidelined. I went back to the uh, uh, more reliable far less prone to oscillation uh, Russian uh, that are usually referred to as 6922s, although the uh, Russian number, I believe, is 6N23 or 6H23. I've seen it both ways. But I'll try and post a picture of that. So anyway, what I'm going to do...
going to do here is um, I'm going to try and adjust the bias, and I'm not sure how well I can do this. I'm going to have to see if I can do it one-handed, which I doubt, so uh, we may be setting the camera down. Okay, so I have a little clip here on the edge it's soldered to the board, which uh, that's there's a ground lead, and here's my uh, meter. We'll put it on volts. And there are two test points here. And that's the, the T5. No, that's the, uh, there we go, T7. Oops. Okay, that's gone down a bit. So 10.2 and T8 over here. Both at 10.2. I think that was originally at 10 and a half. So that's uh, lower than I thought. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. So the uh, unit, um, uh, one of the cool things Mr. Pass did is uh, we have these uh, potentiometers here, one for each channel, which you adjust the bias on the new tube with. And you can actually change the amount of distortion that it produces. And I wish he had a chart for that. Uh, he does show distortion versus uh, output, uh, amplitude, and frequency. And, uh, but, uh, uh, the cool thing is uh, if uh, you adjust uh, the bias down to uh, about 9 volts, you get uh, a very uh, warm sounding unit. Uh, I mean, uh, when I first did it, I was uh, uh, put off by it quite a bit. You get a very traditional tube sound, uh, lots of second harmonic. And uh, it sounds very fat, warm, and tuby, which is a little too much of a good thing for me. I prefer uh, my tubes to be uh, uh, fairly neutral, but still have that fullness and body that tubes provide. So uh, finding the exact value I wanted has been a little hard. Uh, if you run the... Uh, uh, up, if you run the bias up to the uh, textbook uh, 12 volt value, you get very low distortion, but you can barely hear the contribution of the new tube. It's actually at that point, uh, it sounds like you're mainly just hearing the B1 buffers and uh, with a little bit of treble roll off. So. I've been fishing around here in the middle, uh, trying to get uh, a, uh, uh, a median value that I like, something that adds enough fullness yet still has that uh, uh, clean sound that I prefer. So anyway, I'm going to stop for a bit here and tweak the, uh, the pots. Okay, so uh, right now, ooh, that one went down a hair. I was trying for 10 even on the uh, unit. and Okay, so now I'm uh, showing 10 on each side. And uh, that should do it. We'll see how that does. I didn't realize I'd uh, already crept it down that far already. So it shows it's cleaner than I thought. So anyway, we'll undo that and give it a listen. <laughs> 